Hello, everybody. I'm back again. I don't know if it's by popular demand, but uh, we're going to do another Ask Bruno-ish question, Ask the Fiber Expert. And I guess they couldn't find an expert, so they grabbed me. But uh, we're getting a lot of response, uh, excellent response on our YouTube videos, and I hope they've helped you guys out. And we got one question, and I thought I would address it as a, as a little video. Our uh, video director here thought it would be a good video to make instead of responding uh, in a typewritten uh, email. So the question had to do with, you know, what are the differences in splicers? And splicers right now are super hot. Uh, there's a different cho choices and options, and maybe it can be difficult to decide. So I'm just going to kind of do a quick overview. I'm probably not going to do any splicing, any of the nuts and bolts. We have plenty of videos for you for that. I'm just going to talk about maybe some differences in some of the manufacturers. So there's really three large manufacturers, big names in the splicing world, and I have some uh, splicers here for those for those companies. We have uh, AFL, uh, Fujikora, uh, we have Fitel, Sumitomo. This little guy here happens to be an FIS splicer, but the big three would be AFL, Fitel, and Sumitomo in no particular order. Uh, they're excellent machines. Uh, fusion splicing really the procedural stuff is is relatively the same for most of these units or for most any splicer uh, so the question is well, which one fits what i need to do so we need to talk about the technology of the splicer and that really dictates the differences between these models so i've kind of got them sort of logically spread out here uh, you can see here we have a 90s that's their latest greatest model from Fitel. I'm sorry, from Fujikora, sorry. And I have the 179 from Fitel. And these two here are what we call core alignment splicers. So this would be the top end of your splicer world. And they use a technology where there's cameras built inside and they have the ability to do axial movement of the fiber. And so the cameras are gonna see where the cores of those fibers are and do some alignment. So before the splice occurs, uh, you'll see the, the fibers align. And what they're doing is trying to get the best core-to-core -core splice that you can for optimization of that splice. So what they do before they splice, they're gonna align and then they'll splice and fire. So that would be the 90S that I have here uh, in the 179. Sumitomo also has a, uh, an excellent splicer as they're called core alignment. Again, this one's a little different. I thought I'd grab a Sumitomo ribbon splicer. We'll talk about that in a minute. But these three here are all single splice splicers. These two here, again, are the core alignment. Now, okay, that's going to do what ultimately? It's not really going to change your procedure. It's going to change your per splice attenuation. So of all the splicers, your core alignment splicers are going to have the lowest amount of attenuation per splice. Now remember, the when we do a splice, uh, it'll give you an estimation of attenuation. Really, that's not certified until we do an OTDR on that splice, but it gives you a good idea if it's a good or a bad splice. And again, the 90S is Fitel, I'm sorry, I said it again, is Alcoa Fujikora's splicer, the 179 is Fitel's, and again, we have the uh, the Q models for the Sumitomo. So that, when we look at price, that's going to be your highest price splicers. Now, when we roll back the clock, those used to be the only ones they made, and well, I remember when I started, they were eighteen to twenty thousand dollars. Now you're in between the nine and ten thousand dollar range. So around 96, 1997, we started to get other models of splicers. Uh, we call these the cladding alignment splicers. So the the manufacturing of a fiber got so good with, that the cores were always really perfectly centered after a specific date in the late 90s. And so we didn't necessarily need that adjustment, that axial movement. So they came out with a much less expensive, uh, maybe at the time four or five thousand dollars. Again, compared at the time to eighteen to twenty, even now ten. Uh, they don't do any axial movement. They have the cameras and they push, they basically hold the fibers in V-grooves and they push them together and align the claddings and so we know we have a pretty good core alignment. Really the major difference between a cladding or what they call a V-groove alignment and these core alignment splicers is basically average attenuation of the splice. It's going to be a little bit higher on the uh, cladding alignment splicer. A few years after that, only a few years ago basically, uh, we came out with kind of a middle of the road. So we have 
you know, your higher end units core, your lower end units cladding, and they both do excellent work. Uh, we got one kind of in the middle, which our AC5 happens to be, and every one of these companies also makes those too. It's called active clad alignment. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of taking from both worlds. So it's aligning the claddings, like the cladding alignment splicer, but it's using movement to basically align the claddings of the fiber. So we do have the axial, axial movement there. Uh, and we're going to get a little bit better splice loss than just the cladding splicer. So this is called active clad splicer. These have become very popular. Uh, and again, much less expensive than the, the higher end core splicers. So which one do I need? Well, if you're, you know, you got your guys, they're always going to be doing long haul fiber and attenuation is significant because of the huge distances that we're covering. And generally, that's going to be your core alignment splicers to get the best splice you can. If I'm somebody that's doing fibers in buildings or shorter distances, you know, the cladding or the active clad would be a great unit. You can save a lot of money. The procedures are the same, um, but we're going to, we're going to just not fork out so much money up front for the splicer. So that's the major difference. Some of the other things to think about, and by the way, before I go into the other items, uh, we also have an Alcoa and Fitel and Sumitomo. They also do ribbon splicers. This, this one here happens to be a ribbon, so if you're familiar with 12 count fibers that are in ribbons, basically is a matrix to hold them. This actually, the ribbon splicers, and again, off the top of my head, I know the AFL one's easy because it's 90R instead of 90S or single and ribbon. Uh, but this one happens to be the, the Sumitomo one you can see here, the type Q102. It, it actually splices 12 fibers to 12 fibers. So it does 12 at one time instead of one. It comes with a special jacket stripper that strips all those, the matrix and the, the, the type, the 250 coating from the, from the fiber. And so we can do ribbon splicing. And if we're using ribbon, you know, we're much more efficient. And a lot of jobs now, when we're doing uh, high counts fiber, high counts of fiber, instead of doing 144 or 288 individual splices, you know, if as a ribbon, that would be maybe 12 or 24 splices. So you can see the labor savings. It's a little, a little more intricate to do a ribbon splice. So it's not a one to 12 time, right? It's gonna take you a little more to do a ribbon. Now the ribbon splicers can also do single fiber splicing, but it's not vice versa. The single fiber splicers can't do ribbon. So that's an interesting point. And also all ribbon splicers are clad alignment. They're not core because you would have to have the ability to align 12 individual fibers core to core and, and that's just not going to happen. So this is definitely a cladding alignment splicer. And again, this is the ribbon. So again, makes you very much more, more efficient. Uh, like I said, the 12 fibers at one shot. Also going to pay a little more money for these things too. So these are up in the, don't quote me, twelve to $15,000 range. And you can understand why because it's just a more elaborate machine does more for you. So some of the other things when you're thinking about splicing, uh, your splicers are going to come with what we call solid chucks, where where we put our fibers in, it's a solid based holder and it doesn't come out of the unit. And the cleaver, and that's another important part, always buy these as kits, right? It comes with the cleaver, the splicer, the cores, the batteries, electrodes, nice carrying case. Well, I tend to prefer the newer style of removable chucks and some of the splicers come with them, some you buy them as an accessory. So instead of having your cleaver that cuts that fiber where you have to do measurements and take it out and then put it, load it into the splicer and do fine adjustment, what we have is removable holders. So we can just load that fiber, there's no measuring, and when we put this holder into the cleaver, it cuts the fiber, we can take the holder out and there's no clamps or adjustment, we just set it right back into the splicer. I really like removable holders. So that's another thing we wanna think about. Now, when we go back to the cleavers, right? We all have different cleavers, different manufactured cleavers. Some of the, the highlights, some of the uh, accessories, the things they do better, some of these newer cleavers rotate your blades. So we have a diamond wheel in there and each blade can do about a thousand cuts per position. So we have to rotate that blade when it wears out for better cuts. Some of them have 18 positions, some have 16. And traditionally in the past, you'd turn it over, 
unscrew the base, rotate the blade one position, and you're ready to roll. Some of the newer technology we're seeing is we have auto-rotating blades. So they'll actually rotate on every cut around. Uh, one of the newer ones that we have actually has height adjustment on the wheel. So it has 16 positions and we're going to get anywhere from 16 to 20,000 cuts. Once we wear that blade out, you can actually adjust the, by just of a push of a button, adjust that blade up and you can go through the blade again. So it's auto-rotating and height adjusting. Once we go through that one time for the medium setting, we can go to another setting, raises the blade incrementally. We can go through again. So <clears throat> we're talking 50 to 60,000 cuts per blade before we ever have to replace that blade. So that's another important thing to think of. So when we're gonna splice, what's the bottom line about splicing? What type of fiber, multi or single? What are my lengths? What do I need for attenuation in the splice? And they only vary by hundredths of a dB typically. How long is it, like again, how long is the fiber? What do I want to achieve? Also another thing to think about is, am I going to do splice connectors that are splice on connectors? And do I need a special holder to hold uh, the connector, which you do? Who's, whose splice on connector am I gonna use? So these are the things that we need to discuss. And I'm a really big fan of calling your FIS rep, your salesperson, myself, and, and talking about the different splicers to try to fit you into the splicer you need. Uh, one, of the, one of the regrets I have is if somebody purchases the, purchases the splicer that might not be perfect for their job. Maybe they under purchased or maybe they over purchased. So it's an education thing. And I hope that this video, which I'm always long winded, right? I hope that what I explained here helps a little bit in your decision making on which, which splicer you're gonna use. And uh, I really appreciate the comments uh, on the YouTube videos. And if you have questions for me, feel free to respond on this video. Uh, you can respond in any other videos. You can send me an email directly at jbruno at fissales.com. Uh, and maybe we might get you into a training class. I really like making friends across the world here. And maybe I can get you into a training class. So thank you for listening to me go on about splicers. Uh, and I appreciate all the views on our, on our YouTube station. So thank you very much. Click that subscribe button and notifications bell.